In this video, we're going to compare three different types of electric heater. So here you can see we've got three kinds of heater. We've got a fan heater, a panel heater, and this oil-filled heater from Ascot Electric Heating. Now we've made a few videos on the subject of this particular range of heaters, including a really detailed review. So if you're interested in this subject, please do go and check those out. Now often when we start to discuss the subject of electric heating, we'll get people wading in to extol the virtues of heat pumps, and there's no denying they are a very important part of the plan for efficiently heating homes in the future. However, they're not suitable for every application, and many properties will still require a heating boost in the form of instant electric heating, or maybe like I've done in my studio here, you just want to quickly add some additional heating to a room that doesn't have an existing conventional rad. So what are the benefits of an oil-filled heater over these other two? Well, to answer that, we need to understand a bit about heat. It comes in three forms, which you probably remember from your school days. Conduction, convection, and radiation. For the purposes of this video, we're going to ignore conduction, because you don't usually hope to get warm in a property by putting your hand directly on a radiator. Convection is where a gas or a liquid is heated up, and as it's heated, the warm substance expands, becomes less dense, and moves upward in the tank or the space. Radiation is when heat is transferred without affecting the intervening space. It's how heat is transferred from the sun to the earth. And you can experience this by stepping outside on a warm day. If you stand in the shade and then step out into the sunshine, you'll instantly start to feel warmer on your skin and clothes, even though the air temperature in and out of the shade are the same. That sensation of increased temperature is because the radiant heat from the sun is now hitting you directly. So how do convection and radiation feature in these heaters? Well, looking at the simplest heating device here, the panel heater, it's got a filament in the bottom of it, and when electricity passes through it, it heats up. The air inside the heater gets warm and rises up and out of the vents at the top end and continues to rise into the space it's in. Then the cold air in the room sinks, and because the warm air is exiting the heater at the top, it draws cold air into itself through the bottom grill, which then gets heated and moves up and out of the heater, and the cyclic process of heating the room continues through the process we just referred to as convection. Now this is all well and good, however the astute among you will realise that most of the heat in the room is now floating around at the ceiling and cold air is moving towards the heater at a lower level, meaning that the benefit of the heat is above head level and cold drafts are making your feet and ankles cold. In other words, convection is not the best method of heating a room up. The fan heater works in a similar way. There's an element inside there that gets hot, but then instead of relying on the natural process of convection, it's given a helping hand by means of a fan that draws cool air in the back and simultaneously blasts the heated air out of the front, kind of like the panel heater on steroids. But once the heater's left the front and the effect of the fan has been reduced, we're back to the same issue with the panel heater where the heat mainly collects at the top of the room and the cold air is at the bottom. Just with the added bonus that you can get toasty ankles if you stand in the airstream at the front of the fan. Now this oil-filled radiator is the Ascot Electric Heating Graphite Radiator, similar to those we've reviewed on the channel previously. Click the link in the description below to see that. And this heater has the added advantage that it doesn't just rely on convection to heat a space, it also has an element of radiation about it as well. This is because the heating element doesn't directly heat the air around it. It heats up a reservoir of oil inside here, which is then transferred to the metal fins. Now because these metal fins are the part that are in contact with the outside air, two heating effects take place. One is convection, in the manner which we've already discussed, and you can see the fins are formed in such a way as to draw air vertically through them and move the heat into the room. But they also radiate heat, meaning that if you're sitting across from the heater, a significant amount of heat will transfer from the metal panels to you, without heating up the intervening air, bringing greater comfort. This radiant heat is also transferred to the fabric of the building, which will then dissipate the heat back into the space gradually, even after the heater turns off, leaving you with a more temperate, more comfortable environment. The oil-filled heater from Ascot also has the advantage of having a lower touch temperature, making it safe for children to be around, as well as reducing the risk of setting something on fire, like a piece of clothing, if it's left over the panel heater, or if you place something in front of the fan heater, although it's advised that you don't put anything over the oil-filled heater anyway. Another great advantage to this heater is the intelligent control. It features something called a Proportional Input Derivative, or PID thermostat, which is a bit technical for this video, but basically means that it learns how quickly the room heats up, and over time becomes more accurate getting the room heated to the right level without overheating it. It's much more accurate, and therefore energy saving than the old bimetallic strip stats that you'll most likely find in these other heaters. 
So there we go. That's a quick overview of some of the different types of heater. If you're interested in learning more about electric heating, please check out the videos we've made on this Ascot electric heater. And as always, we'd like to hear from you. Do you think the future of heating is electric, heat pump, hydrogen, or perhaps a blend of the three? Have you been installing electric heaters recently? Whatever your thoughts or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. And as always, thank you very much for watching.